What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and in light of yesterday's historic trade between the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks, we saw the Seattle Seahawks trade a fourth round pick, and the greatest quarterback to ever don a Seattle Seahawk jersey, Russell, Mr. Unlimited, Wilson, he's gone man, still shocking, but you know, I'm, you know I don't want to say I'm excited for Denver, because this is Rinse and repeat for the Broncos. They just trade for a all-time quarterback. Suck as soon as they're gone because they can't properly replace them. And then you just trade for another all-star quarterback. But also makes that division much more competitive. And as a neutral fan, seeing Denver be hot because they have a great roster. I'd like Javante Williams is a beast. Wide receiver room is stacked. It's just going to be good from a neutral standpoint watching football. But you'd think that'd be a fun rebuild, C4. Maybe seeing what Russell Wilson will look like on the Denver Broncos. Maybe, but also about a week ago, did a career replay of Russell Wilson. We ended up going to the Denver Broncos organically, which was kind of weird in hindsight. So I feel like that's still a little fresh on the brain. The team that really intrigues me for a rebuild is the Seattle Seahawks. Got the picks. We got the one from Denver. We got two twos from Denver. We got a five. What was it? A five from Denver. The, the future first right there in 2023. We acquired... Drew Locke for some reason. All right, we got Drew Locke. All right. We got Noah Fan at tight end, which is nice, even though there were some bodies at tight end already on the Seahawks roster between Gerald Everett and Will Disley. And lastly, we added on the defensive side, the veteran presence of Shelby Harris. Ultimately, you know, it's just the signs are clear that the Seattle Seahawks are in a rebuild. There's reports right now that DK Metcalf could be had for trade or Tyler Lockett. Could be had for trade. What we know for a fact is that they straight up went to Bobby Wagner and said, you're no longer required. And they released Bobby Wagner. Howie Roseman. I know. I mean, I know how, you know, Bobby Wagner probably doesn't want to come to Philly. I know he's, he's not going to be signed on for the rebuild we're still kind of going through in Philly. But at least try. Try to bring in the old Bobby Wagner. To Philadelphia, even 30, 31 years old, still gonna give us two good years at linebacker. Kind of like D'Amico Ryan's to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? But this is our Seattle Seahawks roster. It is not very good. I you know, I, I'll say right now, we now have the ninth pick in the first round this year. And I'm kind of thinking, kind of sorta maybe thinking that uh, we tank. We tank for a quarterback in 2023. That right now is my plan, depending on the quarterbacks that are available at nine, depending on the quarterbacks that potentially are available in this free agency period. What do we have to work with on this Seattle Seahawks roster? Very fair to say. Well, you got Chris Carson and Rashad Penny. I think Penny's going to be bouncing to free agency. Uh, but Chris Carson is a beast. Beastly have a running back when he stays healthy. So, uh, you know, 27, not the best age for a rebuild, especially for the running back spot. You got maybe two, three years before his rating starts going down, but that, that's still fine for the time being. At wide receiver, I have no intention of trading Tyler Lockett. I have no intention of trading DK Metcalf. So we have two very good wide receivers, one of the best one-two punches at wide receiver in the NFL. So whatever quarterback we get this year, whatever quarterback we end up having next year, especially if we stick with Drew Locke, he is going to have weapons. You get Eskridge, which wasn't you know, an okay pick from Seattle. That's another thing, man, that goes on with Seattle. I don't blame Russ to a certain degree. Seattle just has been horrific at drafting talent since the Legion of Boomer. They peaked, and that's fine, because you had that great era. But, my God, man, just, you know, they're throwing up ducks after ducks after ducks with their premier picks over the last couple years. Well, at least they hit, unlike the DK Metcalfs of the world. They brought in Noah Fant. Uh, you know, I don't know what we're going to do at tight end. You don't really need three. I don't know if any of these guys are set to be a free agent or anything like that, but... I mean, no fans clearly are tight end one outstanding. You pair that athleticism, he's one of the freakier athletes at tight end in the NFL. Well, DK Metcalf, that's that's a tough assignment for some teams to try to stop. Offensive line, yep. Uh, Dwayne Brown's no longer here. You got Damian Lewis at Garrett. Does he have a dev trait? So he has a star dev. I think Posich got a star dev now. I believe we got Gabe Jackson. I mean, the O line still needs complete retooling. Absolutely need to put some effort there. Defensive end, what do you got at pass rush? Dunlap's a Gator legend, but that can't be your best guy at all. Very expensive. We need to free up some money to here, too. Um, and I'll just do that. I mean, no, let's do it right now. Right now, carry higher, five million bucks. Don't need you. You know, we're going to have to be flexing 
here in this free agency period. We got Shelby Harris, who we just acquired. We might as well keep him on the roster. LJ Collier, another just what? Why did you draft this guy? Where you drafted him? Um, we'll get rid of Mayo. Uh, there's almost another like two and a half million bucks available to spend. Puna Ford, D tack. I mean, there's some. Does he have a dev? Does not have a dev, but he's a solid player, solid defensive tackle. Linebacking core, you got Daryl Taylor. Definitely some upside there. Maybe we shift him to defensive end. Middle linebacker, currently don't have any on roster. We have Jordan Brooks, who, you know, let's be honest, Jordan Brooks probably the successor here for Bobby Wagner. So we might want to take Jordan Brooks, move him inside the middle linebacker, just because, especially right now, with whatever reason, this scheme's calling for a pass rusher at right outside linebacker. Uh, let's see what happens if we shift in the middle linebacker to be the true successor for Bobby Wagner. His rating goes up a point. So I, I feel like that's probably in our best interest. Barton, you know, great athlete. We have some good athletes at linebacker, but not a lot of established guys. Going to the secondary, gets a bleaker. DJ Reed, solid. You got Sidney Jones. Bless Austin, Amadi. It's not the Legion of Boom. It's just not that. Digs at safety, solid. Strong safety. Obviously, you got Jamal Adams, who... Quite the polarizing player, but let's still be honest, Jamal Adams is a very good football player. And regardless of what Seattle gave up to get him, what regardless of what Seattle paid to retain him, went on the field, he's an impact playmaker. Absolutely impact playmaker, so he is going to have to be one of the faces of this rebuild as we try to turn things around here in Seattle and get them back to a ship. Another thing, we just don't need a three, like a you know, four million dollar kicker. Free up some more funds there. I, I don't know what else we could do in terms of roster cutting. In terms of savings like Dunlap, you know, if we can't if we can't find anyone in the open market, I would like to have you know Gator Bias fully inside, keep him on. Uh, Brandon Shell, we just all right, you're gone. That's terrible. I just can't justify having a sub seventy overall tackle making that amount of money. But I mean, you look beyond that. There's just not a lot of whales on the roster anymore. So we're gonna be able to go in and flex absolutely in this first free agency period. And it'll be interesting to see what we can do with our new ammunition in the 2022 NFL Draft. So let's get into the first offseason of this new Madden 22 realistic rebuild of the Seattle Seahawks without Bobby Wagner and without Russell Wilson. Okay, so we're starting this rebuild right away with who do we want to resign? And luckily, that's just awesome. The best players that we got from the trade uh, need to get resigned. We'll start from the bottom, work our way up. We have plenty of money to talk about resigning players. So first up is Drew Locke. I think he will be their starter. Um, so we don't want to pay him too, too much here, but I, I think it is for two years. That's probably the window that we'll be looking for quarterbacks. We will see what Drew Locke can offer to our squad. After that, uh, a lot of depth players that I'm not going to be rushing to resign. I think Post is at center because he has the dev trade. He's only looking for a two year deal. Fortunately, we have to be competitive with our offers because this is the only opportunity we're going to have to try to resign some of these guys. Even though I think if we turn into a pissing contest on the open market, we have an insane amount of salary cap spot to bring them back. We'll bring him back. We just don't need two tight ends. You know, you just, just all you know. But Sidney Jones has been solid. I think there could be some 26, 27, 28, some solid play from him. Opportunity to go up a dev trade potentially. We'll offer him a two year 9.2. He wants to come back. Penny. I think in real life, I'd probably try to bring him back, especially with how hot he was to close the end of the year out. Again, much like tight end depth in a Madden Sim, you just don't need depth at running back, at least early on in a rebuild. That's kind of surplus requirement, getting year four, year five, and you got salary cap just burning a hole in your pocket. We need to build this team. DJ Reed, really good player. Actually, surprised doesn't have a dev trait. Uh, we'll give him a four-year deal. Bump that up just a little bit. We'll give him four million bucks, two and a quarter. That should be enough for a year. Thank you, DJ Reed is signed on. Quandre Diggs. Now they're fairly solid player. Could get younger. I think we might be able to get a little bit younger here. We've got to fully commit to the rebuild. Noah Fan, this is a big one. We cannot let him walk. Can't acquire Noah Fan in a trade. And then just be like, oh, well, we lost him in the first window. And then like Denver or something crazy rebids to bring him back. So we'll give him five and four. Very good offer. He signs. So now we can take a remaining salary cap. And just completely go ham in the offseason here. So for our first free agency period, we're going to spend, we're not going to spend like insane amount of money, but we're going to try to slowly but surely improve our team. So first of all, we got Taron Armstead. 
you know, he's the big dog. He's a guy who's most likely looking for a payday, I feel like. You know, I, I don't know. I don't get the sense that Armstead's looking to go to a contender. I think he just wants a massive contract. And we're going to try to pay him the most money because we desperately need help on the offensive line. There's also um, Trent Brown is available at right tackle. Just, I don't know if we're going to be able to flex that hard. That's a lot of money. We're trying to do a rebuild here. Maybe we can get cheaper draft a tackle uh, versus just paying an absurd amount of money right away. But we also need a tackle. We need we need double tackles. And, uh, I, you know, we'll go for one. We'll take a swing on one. I'm not too worried about the regression. Has a start. Superstar dev. Uh, we're going to look at Justin Reed at safety to come in and be the free safety replacement for Diggs. Fatu Kasi, 27, has the star dev. Just adds more depth at defensive tackle. And then, of course, Goggles on special teams. That still gives us an insane amount of money to be active, really. To maybe be, if we want, for the next two to three off seasons. We can be the biggest spenders over the next couple years, so we don't have to blow it all in the first window, considering that, you know, there's a lot of veterans. We're, we're trying to rebuild it. Evans looked interesting, but he's not a scheme fit outside. Like, he's not a scheme fit for left outside linebacker. We need a pass cover guy. He's not a scheme fit for right outside linebacker. We need a pass rusher. So, you know, while there's definitely some guys, I thought about corner as well, but between DJ Reed, Sidney Jones, both those guys just got re-signed. I feel like if we see a corner that we want to get in maybe in the draft, that will be the area that we go. So hopefully we can get the tackle, Taron Armstead. Hopefully we land our big fish and get a couple death pieces along the way. Nice, we got all of our targets. Was slightly worried, especially with Armstead. I mean, it's either take the money and join the rebuild or go somewhere that's going to be a contender right away and maybe get a little less money. So happy that we got Armstead. We really got all of our targets there. And we still have, like I said, 80 million bucks that's going to carry over to next year, keep some of our talented guys in-house, and we can be super aggressive in the next free agency window as well. Before we hit the draft, I went back and I offered Rashad Penny. Literally, it was like just above a red offer. It was like a $1.4 million cap hit. And he signed. So I was like, all right. You know, I, I can't disrespect what the hell Rashad Penny. When he literally was like the hottest running back in real life to end the 2021 season. Bring him back on just peanuts. All right, let's start the draft. We now have pick nine. There's no real player, honestly, that I'm... Hoping gets to us. Let's kind of watch how the top 10 picks play out. Hopefully there's nothing stupid. But I'm sure there probably will be. Oh, it's not even loading. I can't even see who's making the pick. So that's awesome. Well, hopefully the board looks good here at pick number 9. Used to belong to Denver. Now it belongs to us. We're probably going, we're just going to go BPA. So look at the guys that are available. We have Matt Corral if we want to go for a quarterback. Sam Howell still there. Malik Willis, Carson Strong. Really, could pick our quarterback if we wanted to. Malik Willis, they could just j jump right back in. But that's not really my plan. I'm almost here committed to whatever success or failures Drew Locke can bring to us. We could go after another wide receiver. Just so we were stacked three deep. And Tyler Lockett's no spring chicken anymore. Garrett Wilson would be awesome. Burks would be awesome. Williams, Alave, more, brings that speed. You don't really get that with Drake London. But I also think right now, wide receiver surplus requirements. We have way bigger holes. Looking at the offensive line, we could go, you know, really anywhere. I think we could go right guard. No real right guard worth taking. Pick nine. Right tackle. Penning's there, but is, is you know, really going to burn that. Uh, versus, you know, going somewhere else. Maybe get filet -Lay if he slips to the second round or grabbing someone. I, I do think we do need a right tackle pretty badly. But pick nine for Penning, that, that's a bit of a stretch. Look at the defense. You have Trevon Walker, Jermaine Johnson absolutely dominate the combine. We do need a pass rush help. So Trevon Walker is very interesting. Jordan Davis, a D tackle. He's just such a freak. Could be interesting as well. You go to the linebacking core. Really have our pick of the best linebackers. You go in the secondary. Have our pick of the top corners. Derek Stingley, Sauce Gardner is still here. Oh, man, that's interesting. This is a tough call. I feel like I would, I feel like I want to rebuild the Legion of Boom here just a little bit, so I'm gonna grab Sauce Gardner first, and then the second pick is going to be best tackle and or best pass rusher available. But I, I feel like we need that permit, you know, that perimeter guy, that premier guy. We have DJ Reek play in the slot. You got Sidney Jones for what it's worth, but we need that premier outside corner. Sauce Gardner solidified himself as corner one. Maybe a little bit of risk taking him over Derek Stingley. But I'm, I'm, you know, I want to try to rebuild up and as much as I can the Legion of Boom 2.0. Tackles aren't great, so we're gonna grab Arnold Ebiketti, the pass rusher 
from Penn State, formerly of Temple. I was not expecting a dev trait, but I will take a dev trait. Shit, we're right back on the clock again at pick 10, 9 and 10. Let's go. Okay, I am recording this on PC, so these are not my draft classes. I needed an up-to-date 2023 draft class. Mine is still a little off the mark. So I wanted to chill on that just a little bit. Wow, Malik Willis is still slipping. Out of the sake of realistic, there's no way Malik Willis will still be available in the second round, so I won't completely shoot myself in the foot there. But there is a chance someone like Jameson Williams could. That's intriguing. Adds a lot of speed. People you know, maybe a little bit scared of the injury. Still looking for an offensive line. Like Zion Johnson is the best lineman available, but he is out and out of guard. And I don't know if we, you know, do we get a guard right now? I need a tackle. James Williams is there. That's an immediate replacement for, you know, we got to do it. We got to do it. That's just too much value right there. Too much value, and it's within the realm of possibility that he could slip. Wow, D catching. I don't want anything to do with that. He's still going to be a good player, though. I got it. I got it. There's no way he sucks. There's no way that those key ratings are going to be fake news. There we go. Another dev player. That's how you do the rebuild, man. You're going to go BPA. It's our whole team sucks. So our draft recap here. Don't know why. It kind of looks bugged there. It's probably something to do with PC. But still very good draft class. Look at the ratings. I'm happy with it. We got Sauce Gardner, 78 hidden dev in the top 10 with the pick from the Denver Broncos. So that's dope. Second round, we got Ebiketti, 69. Not the best rating. Might be hoping for a little bit higher, but the hidden dev, I'm excited to see what he can do there. Uh, Jameson Williams is really good value pick there within the top 10 of the second round. Slipped because of the ACL. Uh, you know, the rest of the league being too scared to make this pick. It's going to work out well for us today. We're now three deep at wide receiver and have our successor, if you will, for Tyler Lockett whenever that time comes. Tyler Smith at right tackle at a Tulsa. We grabbed him. He's 70. Normal, only normal dev, but he's going to be able to compete right away for the starting right tackle spot. He's a guy that has, you know, first round, early day two buzz, and we got him really, really at the last bottom pick in the second round. So that's some really good value there with really both of our second round picks. Uh, we got Channing Tindall, linebacker from Georgia, more so a depth play at this point. Haskell Garrett, D tackle from Ohio State, 64. D'Angelo Malone, pass rusher. He's going to, we're going to slide him over to right outside linebacker. Uh, to play behind Daryl Taylor. And then we got Luke Fortner on the offensive line out of Kentucky with a 62. But all in all, three hidden devs, potentially four rookie starters slash contributors for our first year of the rebuild. That's pretty damn good. That's a great way to start this thing out. All right, so now it's time for year one of our Seattle Seahawks realistic rebuild. Here's our squad. Here is our squad that I'm not saying that we're tanking. Like, look, we still have like a somehow pulled an 80 rating. Uh, overall, but we got Drew Locke under center. We brought back Carson. We got DK X Factor, Tyler Lockett, Jamison Williams, now wide receiver. Brought in Taron Armstead through free agency, re signed postage, drafted Tyler Smith out of Tulsa. It's interesting to see how he will develop here as a rookie. Got a great guy to learn from in Taron Armstead, plus the addition of Noah Fant there at that skill position spot. It's really going to, like, that's a that's a winning offense for the most part, right? The offensive line could be a little bit better, but in terms of skill position players, it's it's really going to fall on the shoulders of Drew Locke and how far he wants to take us. Defensively, work in progress as well. Uh, drafted Arnold Ebicati, we're going to give him the push here over Carlos Dunlap to start. For, forward, we got Fadu Kasi, we brought in free agency. Harris came over in the Russell Wilson trade. We got Sauce Gardner. That's what we need. Absolutely need Sauce Gardner to be big time. Best time, every other kind of time that we could possibly have. He needs to be the, you know, with Jamal Adams, with Justin Reed now coming in free agency. We're trying to rebuild the Legion of Boom here. So no pressure. No pressure, fellas. Uh, the linebacker core, we got Daryl Taylor, Jordan Brooks, Barton, no more, Bobby Wagner. It's just, yeah, this is what happens when you do a full-on rebuild. It's just not a lot of familiar faces and guys that have to step up to fill the shoes of very, very good players who are going out the opposite direction. But the reason why we feel okay about, you know, maybe if we suck this year with Drew Locke under center, is that the draft class has been submitted. And there's some very good players at the top end of this draft class. Obviously, we want to focus a little bit more on the quarterbacks. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, either one of those dudes would be simply outstanding for the Seattle Seahawks to land. But we're talking about a generational player, maybe. You know, if we're in top three, we missed out on a quarterback. Will Anderson is a hell 
of a consolation prize. So we're going to see how this year plays out. Maybe we're dogging Drew Locke too much. Maybe he'll get us in the playoffs, you know, around 500. I don't know. But if not, we're full on. We got some two QBs here that I would love to continue this rebuild with. Things aren't so hot this year, but I didn't even know this was a matchup. But week seven in 2022, we're going to Denver. It is the Russell Wilson revenge game. Just wanted to sim it out. We'll look at the box score because, come on, what's going on here? Can we beat them? How fit, well, how crazy would that be if Seattle could beat Russ-led Broncos team? And it wasn't uh, an exciting game. 17-14. Not even probably worth checking out, to be honest with you. So we fall to 2-5. and five. Everyone else in the West is awful. Everyone is trying to tank for Bryce Young and or CJ Stroud, apparently. Or maybe even Will Anderson. All right, we got a breakout scenario. Our first one with Cody Barton, left outside linebacker. Okay. See what he can do here. We got the divisional game against the 49ers. 49ers are pretty good. But, you know, when it's a linebacker like that, you can easily attain that in a loss. We lose 35-28. Kind of competitive, but looking for Cody Barton to get off that normal dev to a star dev, and he did not. I'm sure this is going to be a win. Let's take on the 8-2 and two Chiefs. Good news is this looks like the Rams have got a two-game win streak, which helps us out. We are now last place. Uh, are we currently the worst team in the NFL? Uh, probably. No, Giants, Texas, Dolphins. Oh, not even close. There's still some... All right, so we're off. Especially the Dolphins lost seven in a row. A lot of teams looking for some top-tier quarterbacks. All right, hopefully we keep sucking. Uh, but let's look at our contracts right now. Just at about the midway point of the season. Players we do not want to see leave. Well, if Barton hit that dev trait, we would have liked to keep him. I wonder, though, with the tackles, if he'll go up. We'll wait. We'll wait and see on that. Uh, Chris Carson, yep, we'll get him back here. That's a reasonable deal. Four-year deal, 30 million bucks. Pretty sure he's been on fire this year. He's been the only guy I've seen win a weekly award. We got DK Metcalf, signed on the dotted line, five-year deal, almost $100 million. Get him locked up. Um, I also feel like because we have so much money, Puna Ford's not, that's not a bad contract. Like, if he's your D-tackle three, D-tackle two, He's absolutely not a scheme fit, though. Mm. But he's also probably going to be the best D-tackle in the open market. So we'll we'll sign him. And the only other thing that could come back to bite us in the ass is if Cody Barton not getting ahead of a potential dev trade. Because if he's star dev, you know, that's going to be $12, $13 million instead of $8, 9000000 million. But I guess we will wait and see. We got DK signed. And let's just see. Can we upset for the people here right now? Can we upset the Kansas City Chiefs here in week 12? At home. It's at home. 12th man. It was close, but still a loss. So week 17, this is essentially the Bryce Young game. The 3-12 Seattle Seahawks, 3-12 New York Jets. Things have started to settle. There's only two games left in the regular season, and we are both kind of battling it out here for the top pick. Jets have lost five in a row. We've lost six in a row. And you would, you know, it, maybe it's not for sure. Who knows what happens week 18. But you would assume that the loser of this game is probably going to be the actual winner of this game because they will secure the services of the first overall pick. Kind of hope we lose. Come on, Drew Locke. Suck. And he did suck. 23 to 10. We got smoked. Let's just, come on, lose again. 4 and 13, baby. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. And then, of course, we get a... Of course, we get a victory over the Cardinals, 31-7. We finish 4-13. and And with that, we... Oh, we still have the pick! How do we lose... Okay, well, that's why. They're lo they've lost four in a row for the Cardinals. Jets won two in a row. They got hot at the end. So with that being said, we, you know, as almost expected, because our team's not very good, or more at least so, probably the lowest starting quarterback, and you only go as far as your quarterback in the sim, more often than not, in franchise. Uh, we'll be happy with the Week 18 victory, but we'll be even happier with the fact that we have secured the number one overall pick, C.J. Stroud and or Bryce Young, depending who you want to look at that top need quarterback there in the draft central tab. One of those guys is going to be wearing the very weird Seattle Seahawks uniforms. You know, you like to say, like, what color? It's uh, blue, gray, there's green for some reason. But 4-3, and three, we did the job, man. We did the job. Would have been nice to maybe have a couple dev trade scenarios here or there throughout the season. But uh, let's take a look here at who contributed to the success of tanking 
this season. Drew Locke actually not that bad. 11th in the NFL in passing yards. 4,400 passing yards. 24 touchdowns, 14 picks. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 52 sacks is pretty bad. Uh, running the ball, Chris Carson, that's actually pretty good. 1,400 yards, 22 touchdowns. Take that every day of the week for Chris Carson. We had 12-9 and nine for Tyler Lockett, 12-11 and 11 DK Metcalf, 8-2 and two for Noah Fan. Jameson Williams is a rookie. Not a lot of touchdowns, but 600 yards with DK and Lockett being ahead of you. That ain't too, too shabby. Defensively, Jordan Brooks didn't really have a Bobby Wagner-esque season, but it wasn't a bad year. 134 tackles, 6 TFLs, half a sack. Two interceptions. We got 11 and a half sacks from the rookie Arnold Evacetti. Beautiful. 12 TFLs. Exactly what you want to see there. Uh, on the interceptions fronts, three picks from Sauce Gardner. And the dev trade on Sauce. He was hidden dev. Superstar. Let's go, man. Not my draft classes. I All right. We got Sauce Superstar. We got Arnold Evacetti Superstar. Ooh. What do we got? He's probably not. Arnold Evacetti is star. That's fitting. That's a fair dev trait. That was it, right? We only had no. We had three, and then we had Jameson Williams. What was Jameson Williams' dev? Just while we're here, it's probably it could be superstar. I feel like I've drafted him before. No, it's only a star dev. That's fine. We got sauce. We got sauce. The Legion of Boom is getting rebuilt. Looking at the yearly awards here. Before we can quickly just get into it, it's going to be a very exciting offseason for the Seattle Seahawks. MVP went to Patrick Mahomes. And the NFC House Player of the Year went to Zeke. Defense Player of the Year went to Aaron Donald. Offense Rookie of the Year went to Matt Corral. Uh, with Jameson Williams coming in number seven. Defense Rookie of the Year went to Quay Walker. Arnold Abiketti at two. Sauce Gardner at three. Tyndall at eight. And I don't think we're going to have any straight up award winners, unfortunately. But that's fine. Because this was a tank season. And now we get to go into free agency with decent amount of salary. Why is our salary cap so low? We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make some cuts, maybe, ahead of this window just to free up some funds to be big-time spenders so the right players are available on the open market. But we got the number one overall selection. We have the Denver Broncos first-round selection. It is time to do some damage this offseason. I don't think we're going to really have a whole lot of devs, but we might as we close out our lockers. The Kansas City Chiefs beat the Dallas Cowboys 45-14. But I more so care. Do we have any players that go on up a depth trade? On the offensive side of the ball, let's see what we got here. We have Chris Carson went up to a superstar. Awesome. Uh, that's about it. I thought there might have been a chance for Lockett. He had a great year. But I will take Chris Carson now as a superstar dev playmaker for us. Tyler Smith up to a 73 overall. That's pretty cool. Defensively, we had Cody Barton, of course. Uh, we have a chance to offer him a new contract. He went up to a star dev. So what? How did you go up? Just just went up. Superstar X Factor Sauce Gardner. All right, we're all right. Um, I know we want Acro. Where's Acrobat? Isn't that one of these ones? You just not get those yet. Well, eh, we will, yeah, sure, we'll go shut down. Within their zone, zone's coverage. Uh, you know, shut down sounds a little bit more like Sauce Gardner there. Does not give up touchdowns. We'll do, all right, X-Factor, just like that. Rookie X-Factor. Evaketti started Ev. Barton went up. Chris Carson went up. That ain't that, but I'll take that. That's a dub in a tank season. All right, so before we go to the open market, Cody Barton did go up dev trade, so I threw him two-year deal. Just why not, right? Just give us some cover there. Again, another situation where he's not an amazing player, limited ceiling, sure, but if we let him at the open market, he's most likely going to be the best available player. So let's just let's just get ahead of all that. All right, so ahead of the open market, a part of that Russell Wilson trade was Shelby Harris, but uh, I think at this point I'd much rather nine million bucks to spend ahead of this free agency period. I don't really know if there's any other cuts that we have to make. Our roster is fairly tidy from a salary cap standpoint outside of that, which we are. But, uh, hey, thanks for $9 million cap space, Russ. But for this free agent period, some pretty interesting names at quarterback if we really wanted to uh, go that avenue. But uh, we're going to spend our money. We're going to spend a lot of money, but not all of our money. Brian Burns is here. Brian Burns, Arnold Ebenecchetti fixes our pass rush. And I think the fact that we're most likely going, like 99% could have a rookie contract for the remainder of this rebuild for the quarterback spot, 
just means let's go buck wild when we can in free agency because we're going to have that great quarterback on a rookie deal for the remainder of this rebuild. Uh, really, the other big names, I mean, Hawkson would be nice. You don't need two tight ends. DJ Moore, don't need that wide receiver anymore after getting Jamison Williams. There's just, it's just, you know, you look at where we want. I, if there was a true game changer at corner, I probably would have thrown some money out there. But there's, there's you know, Rocky Sin, Greedy Williams. They're, they have the dev trait, but they're not really better than Sidney Jones. Uh, linebacking core, again, you know, if we had a power rusher that was younger than Chandler Jones, like not a win now power rusher here that was a scheme fit, I, I would consider it. But they just, there's just not one that exists. So, you know, we're just going to splurge on what I think is the best pound for pound player. We're going to come in with a very competitive offer. If he doesn't come, then it is what it is. But Brian Burns, hopefully, will be a member of Seattle. Come on, 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 come on. Yes, sir, Brian Burns. Let's go. Especially with Evan Keddy as a rookie, 11 and a half sacks. You throw Brian Burns on the other side, they're going to get after it. Alrighty, it is time to start the 2023 NFL Draft. We got a big time decision. It's not really that big, much of a big time decision, but uh, we have pick one and 22 in the first round. And with our own selection, we've already done a CJ Stroud rebuild. If you, I think it was the Miami Dolphins. So if you want to see CJ Stroud rebuild, Go get that right now. This is the guy. This is the guy. This is what I think is the plan all along for Seattle. Honestly, I think the Seattle Seahawks are committed to tanking to get Bryce Young. Bryce Young is going to be the, you know, I don't know if he's going to be right there with Trevor Lawrence in terms of like can't miss quarterback prospect. He's going to be pretty damn close. This guy's an amazing player. So we are grabbing Bryce Young to be the official successor to Russell Wilson with the first overall pick. Of the 2023 draft. What do we got? We got great athleticism. 90 throw power. That's not amazing, but that's like the that's like the minimum threshold you want for a young quarterback. It's only gonna get better as well. So with pick 22 in the first round, this is where it's like, okay, C4, use your brain here, buddy. Who's gonna be good picks? We have three needs. We can go offensive line. Paris Johnson looks pretty good. We draft Paris Johnson. We could kick Tyler Smith into guard, the takeover for Gabe Jackson, and then Paris Johnson is our starting right tackle because we have Taryn Armstead at left tackle. That's option one. That's behind door one. Door two would be looking at Gervin Dexter at D tackle. He's an absolute beast for my Florida Gators. He'd be able to come in right away uh, and have hopefully a higher upside than like Puna Ford, Fadu Kasi. You know, he's going to be competing with those guys. That's option two. <coughs> Excuse me. Option three is to get a pass rusher. B.J. Ojolari, ZTF from Washington. Both those guys, even throwing Nolan Smith into the mix. Those guys are all pass rushers who will have a higher ceiling most likely then Daryl Taylor for our right outside linebacker that, for some reason in this scheme, is a pass rusher. Those are really the directions. There's not really much at corner, so it's a tough call. I'm thinking, well, BPA here is probably one of these pass rushers. But we just went pass rusher big in free agency. So I, I, feel, I feel like, personally, I, I think it's going to be safer. Because you know, I know Paris Johnson's got to be good, man. He's got to be one of the top guys. C impact blocking is not good though. I mean, that's the only stat we know. We're kind of picking blind there. Whereas Dexter, we do need to D tackle. We have a lot more scouting. A finesse move, A tackle. The physicals. I mean, we got to go Dexter here. I think this has to be the call. Gerber Dexter. No dev. No. Damn it. We still have an option to get one of the other players. It'll be the first overall pick in the second round. Out of all the guys that were on the board, Nolan Smith is still available. It uh, turns on the offensive line. We got McClendon there at tackle. Um, maybe just call me. I mean, would we have any information on him here? A awareness, B pass, C run. Not that great. What do you got for Lampkin? Again, these aren't my drafts. So I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know what. I mean, outstanding combine there from Willie Lampkin, but he's also very undersized. Um. Cohen from Bama. A pass. Blow. Ooh. Yeah, could be a good pick there. We got Harrison from Oklahoma. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even really familiar with him right now. Um, pass block awareness is pretty good. Let's take a look at Dolan Smith. Is there any information here that can say he's going to be good or not? F block shed. That's probably all I need to see right now. Even though Nolan's for the absolute beast. I think Cohen might be the pick here. 
A double A's. Let's do it, man. Rock and roll. No dev, but hopefully you can at least be a high rating, like we're talking mid 70s, and be the successor to Gabe Jackson. Draft recap time. Man, the dev traits just were not there. I thought we got good players late rounds. I was just picking on names that I knew. Um, well, you know, we got Eric Gray in the fifth round here, running back. 68, we got uh, Abrams Drain from Mizzou. Desmond Evans, more of a pass rusher. Darnell Washington, gigantic human being at tight end. 66, normal. We got Brandon Cox, 67, normal. Cohen's at least a 70, so that's somewhat competitive and uh, definitely puts him in a place to be the successor to Gabe Jackson at right guard. Dexter, 72, normal David D tackle. But uh, this is the bell of the ball. This is what we needed. Already just disgusted being here, minus six. But we got ourselves Bryce Young. Let's go. Year two of the rebuild, year one of Bryce Young era in Seattle. Here is a look at our roster. Feeling pretty confident. Feeling good. Feeling happy. Also, uh, this I literally didn't make two picks. My last like three, two, three picks. We had Galvin had hidden dev, and that safety that we got uh, from Mizzou hidden dev. So obviously I just couldn't pick them. All the guys that had big names. Darnell Washington, no, nothing. Not not one dev. Drake Cohen, no, no dev. Eric Gray, no, no dev. Heard of him, baller. But uh, this guy who I've never heard of and Baylor's tackle, you know? We'll take it, though. But here's what our team looks like. Absolutely going to have. Let's just set the lineup here and make our adjustments off of that. Hola, we got Armstead, Lewis, Postage, Gabe Jackson, and Tyler Smith on the offensive line. It's solid. It's a work in progress. Noah Fant at tight end. We have Lockett. DK Metcalf, Jameson Williams, and new superstar Chris Carson. His first year as a superstar running back. As our skill with some players, Bryce Young got the number switch. He switched up with Jameson Williams. He is now rocking the number nine, and the sky is the limit for Bryce Young. I think he's going to be the type of guy that can absolutely bring the Seattle Seahawks team back into a Super Bowl contender and to the Super Bowl. On the defensive side, well, uh, Dexter in the second round. Not really aging well. Really was kind of hoping for the dev trait there. But, you know, with the addition of, we got Brian Burns here. Ebiketti was outstanding double-digit sacks as a rookie. I'm excited to see what our pass rush is. We brought back Barton, Brooks, and Taylor. Solid linebacking core. Not amazing, but solid. Brooks is kind of cut. We'll love him to get a dev trait every now and again. Safeties are good. Justin Reed, Jamal Adams. You look at the rest of the secondary. Sidney Jones, DJ Reed, and the man known as Sauce Gardner, who went up to a superstar X-Factor last season as a rookie. Lockdown, man. This this defense is coming. The pass rush, the secondary. Let's. I want to see double digit sacks for Brian Burns and Ebiketti. I want to see five picks, Sauce Gardner, and I want to see Bryce Young. Not only I'm telling you right now, if he's star dev, I'm going to shit a brick. Uh, that's not what we're looking for for a borderline generational quarterback prospect, Heisman Trophy winner, dominating the game. Literally looks like Russell Wilson at Alabama. Perfect replacement for Russ. Don't give me star. Don't give me none of that bullshit. Let's get into year two. Oh, God damn it, man. All right, midway point of the year. Uh, everyone kind of sucks in the West. Three and six is a little bit below where I'd want to be because our team's not that bad, even though we were a year removed, less than a year removed from having the worst record. Still at 84 overall. Three and six. Maybe not the turnaround we were looking for. Good news and bad news. The bad news is that we found the dev trade out of our beloved new franchise quarterback, and it is, for some reason, a star def. Again, not my draft class. And with the, and for every Sauce Gardner superstar, you get a Bryce Young star def. So that's that's kind of the bad news right now. Uh, I was definitely like almost 90% going to guess that that was going to be a superstar. The good news is that he's on definitely on pace so far this year, even with three and six, to maybe get a dev trade. Right now, he's sixth in passing yards, third in touchdowns. And if he kind of maintains that pace... If we get top five finish in yards and tutties, I think we will be dealing with a superstar upgrade uh, based off his regular season. So he needs to keep playing well with 25 touchdowns. That's pretty damn good midway point. I mean, what? Jesus Christ, you know, on pace for 40 at this point. So hopefully we can hit that. That's going to be important because it doesn't look like we're going to be really contending for the playoffs. Now we're going to look at contracts here. We do have, we, I, know we, I don't want to say we do, but we've done a decent job at, at spending our money wisely. I don't think we've ever really paid for anybody. So we're going to get Damian Lewis here. Let's give him a three-year contract. Still a star to have guard. Not too bad. I'd rather that than Postage. Postage is at 28. I, it's one of those things I feel like we could do better, but also maybe not. 
offer him that. If he wants more money, I wouldn't pay him. But there we go. We're going to tee them. Uh, but I think Daryl Taylor could be an upgrade on the open market there. Uh, Sidney Jones could be an upgrade on the open market. Fadu Kasi could be an upgrade on the open market. He's 28. Only wants a one-year deal. Maybe we'll offer him that contract, and he'll be happy to take it. And then Jordan Brooks, that's a big contract. We want to keep him the successor to Bobby Wagner. And we get him locked in, and that still gives us just over $30 million of salary cap to uh, have some fun in the offseason. All right, so we're simming to the end of the regular season. To be completely transparent, I played the last game, the 36-14 over Pitt. I had to get the dev trade. We were fourth in yards, third in touchdowns, entering that Week 18 game. Uh, we went in, I think we went for 300 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. So, I mean, we might have had it. We might not have had it. We finished fourth and third. So we went from, literally, we maintained our position. We were fourth in yards, third in touchdowns. I just didn't want him to go out, have 90 yards, no touchdowns, and end up missing out on his depth trade. He's had an exceptional year. So that should put Bryce Young in line to get the rightful superstar. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have done that if we we're trying to get an X Factor or something like that. I just feel like, start it for Bryce Young. If we can organically through this season and then just make sure week 18, after the hard work's been done, that we could see it over the line, that's what we were able to do there for Bryce Young. Exceptional year. Not the best win-loss, but not the worst. 7-10. and 10, Technically tied for second place in the NFC West. So we go from the worst team in the NFL to second place in the division, which is pretty dope. Look at the rest of the stats there. Man, Minshew. Like, I love seeing Gardner Minshew do that, man. Big Minshew fan. Uh, but 4,900 yards, 42 touchdowns for Bryce Young. That is pretty damn good. I mean, we just did a Seattle content video when we did the Russ career. And Russ was, these were the kind of stats Russ was putting up in the sim. So with a great quarterback, you know, I fully expect Bryce Young to be able to do the same. That's no stand. I mean, he should be offensive rookie of the year. Absolute lock for that. Running the ball, 12 and 18 for Chris. Man, Chris Carson has got a lot of touchdowns for us in this rebuild. I'm glad that he's doing good there. Receiving, we had 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, DK Metcalf, 11 and 9 for Jameson Williams, 8 and 8 for Tyler Lockett, 7 and 3 for Noah Fant. And on the defensive side of the ball, Jamal Adams having a big year. He needs to, man. He's very, very expensive. We need to get, you know, game breaking plays from him. And unfortunately, we're not getting the sacks that he does in real life. And not really getting turnovers there, but yeah, I guess a lot of tackles, that's fine. Uh, a lot of tackles usually means dev trade increase. So, I mean, he's sitting on Superstar. If we can get an X Factor, that'd be pretty dope. Uh, from a pass rush standpoint, Puna 4, I don't know what happened here. Like, Ebiketti had one sack, just didn't see the field even though he's a starting defensive end. Brian Burns, 7.5, that's disappointing for the amount of money we paid for him. And Puna 4 with 8 sacks is kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. But Sauce Gardner with 5 picks, that's kind of what we're, we called out for. And that's what he got, our superstar X-Factor. Lockdown, you know, finally have the proper successor to Richard Sherman you know, if, if Jamal Adams is your Cam Chancellor replacement, Sauce Gardner is your Richard Sherman replacement right now. We still need to find... I mean, then you could also say, you know, to be fair, Jordan Brooks could be your Bobby Wagner replacement. And maybe we're, we're getting closer than we think to replenishing and replacing the Legion of Boom and establishing Legion of Boom 2.0. MVP this year went to Dak Prescott. Bryce Young coming in at number seven. And the NFC Ops player, they went to uh, Dak Prescott. Bright. Oh my God, they almost went undefeated. 16-1 and for the Dallas Cowboys. Bryce Young, number five for Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player went to Shaq Barrett. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Bryce Young. C.J. Stroud, runner-up there. The quarterback for the Lions. Defensive Rookie of the Year, clearly, obviously. Uh, freak of nature and alien, Will Anderson. Uh, best quarterback, Bryce Young, runner-up to Dak Prescott. Running back went to McCaffrey. Wide receiver went to D.K. Metcalf. That's pretty dope. Um, I don't really think we're going to have anything else here. to talk. Sauce Gardner, number three. Four defensive back. It's a solid year, man. That is all you can ask for. Getting the dev trait, I assume, unless something just blindsides me here. Dev trait and a great rookie season for Bryce Young. Uh, a couple big numbers across the board. And we pretty much doubled our wins from a year ago. So that season's end. The Chiefs beat the Niners in the Super Bowl, but we want to see dev trait increase. We have the upgrade. Again, we're fully expecting Bryce Young to be a superstar. Other than that, I don't know what else we could be in store for. Bryce Young it did go up to superstar. That is the only dev. I mean, I thought Williams had a chance. He had a big year, thousand yards. But Bryce Young up to a superstar. We'll pump that. Uh... What's going on here? Oh, my controller died. Uh, we'll pump that point in. Oh, Jesus Christ! Keyboard and mouse and Madden. All right, we'll pump that point there into improvise. Select space button. All right, well, we're, we're committing to this here now. All right, Bryce Young up to 84 with the boost superstar. That is pretty damn good. Uh, C, 
So on the defensive side, we had a dev trade increase for Cody Barton went up to superstar. Just, I, you know, I knew it was good to resign him because like anytime you have a linebacker that just kind of goes up dev trade, it seems like they get locked into like the Madden algorithm and they will continue to go up dev trade. So that's pretty dope for Cody Barton. Pretty ridiculous though that he is a dev trade before Jordan Brooks. He is a dev trade before, you know, Evacetti who had 11 and a half sacks as a rookie. But, you know, here we are. I will take that. I will take those dev increases. Year three for Angie looks kind of bleak. Like I was looking for a corner. You know, it's one of those things, of course, you know, and he, you know, we, we say a lot. We, we we beat the horse that is not re-signing our best guy because he's going to be the best guy on the open market. Or that's a reason to re-sign him in-house because they are like, look at this. Like, you could argue. I mean, we got a couple guys here with devs. Um, damn, man. There's just not much. Like, Danzler, I mean, hey, 78. Maybe. We'll throw Cam Dancer contract. Got some outside length. That's what we're looking for right now. As the dev. I mean, there's some big bids there, though. Go three and a half. Three and a half and two would be my max. Four year, 21 million bucks. Cam Dancer, just because we have... I mean, even that might not get him from the Chiefs. Ojemudia, year older. Uh, but point being, we need a corner. It's, it's always good to have players you need a draft for. We need a corner... I need a right side linebacker that fits my scheme. Uh, Logan Wilson, we could bring him in, but we need a pass rusher. And Daryl Taylor, much like City Jones, is probably the best player available. Uh, so I think we could probably get a power rusher in the draft. We can prioritize that. Same goes for defensive tackle. Even though Puna Ford had a breakout year, I feel like we could use a game changer at D-tackle. Um, and obviously on the offensive line, we're still looking to improve the guard spot here. Uh, there's just nothing. There's just nothing. Not, not even anybody that I can like get and then like slide over. There's there's no upside. It's just placeholders on the offensive line, which is unfortunate. So yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna hopefully land Dantzler and have a great draft. Now that we're back to the randomized draft prospects. Heck, off season started out great. We got Cam Dancer. So right now, as it stands, we have a corner two, a corner one, and a slot corner. Our secondary, feel good about that. So we have pick seven, and it's kind of coming down to two players right now. Uh, I, I always look at, there's some guys on the O-line that look okay, but not amazing, if I'm being completely honest with you. The best looking guy I thought actually was, we got David Norwell, so Andrew Norwell's brother, I assume, out of Ohio State. Uh, he came in with a pretty high bench press. We do need a guard, but, you know, with, with, not, with no information, we didn't get much scouting done there. Uh, I, I would much rather go to the defensive side, where we need a pass rusher, a guy that can fit. Brett Washington, who actually currently are projected to be the top fit there. We only know B Pursuit. But 6'5", 250, you could probably be a pass rusher. The combine is really, really, really good. Uh, the only other thing would be, do we just say screw it? And even though we got Dantzler, do we go after a top corner? We have Adrian Fletcher from South Carolina. We get A catching C man, which is not ideal. The B zone is decent. The combine is really, really good for a long, lengthy corner. I feel like that guy has for sure a dev trait, but... This guy also might have a dev trade, and he's more of a fit, the successor to Daryl Wash or Daryl Williams. What's it? Daryl Taylor? Daryl Taylor! Come on, give me dev! Fuck! Second round, we got this guy hit on a D-tackle. I said I want a D-tackle with upside. Barclay, a great athlete. 6'4", 300 pounds, 89 strength, 82 acceleration, 79 speed with the dev trait. Drafts recap time. Oh, he's just, ah, man. Chaps my ass. Well, we don't hit on a dev trait guy in the first round. Second round D tackle was Dev Trait. Uh, Wash. I mean, 73 normal. That's pretty womp womp. You know, not really. Well, I mean, he's a pass rusher, but not a power rusher. And you just, you just know that corner that we didn't get. Uh, Adrian Fletcher. He got to have Dev, right? Yeah. This is a corner we passed on. He is Dev Trait. Dare we, dare we take a peek? Because I mean, there was some lineman I was considering, but I, this it was really between him and the corner. And hopefully it's just a star so I can sleep at night. And it is a star, so that's pretty good. There was a lineman. If I can remember the name, it pops up. I'll, I'll say that's who I was thinking about. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was him, Pendleton. He was a guard, and he had a hidden def. And I was just like, you can't get a guard, right? You can't go guard. Uh, it was Pendleton and Norwell were the two guards that were like, oh, they might. Uh, he's star. I mean, it's very rare that you get a... Superstar lineman, but I want to see Norwell here just to be sure 
He's probably dev traits. David Norwell, 72. He's first pick in the second round with the hidden dev trait as well. So literally every other pick would have been you know, similar ballpark to rating and would have had a dev trait. So that's... It's not the best, but we did hit on a dev trait player here. Barclay in the second round with a, you know, the 71 with the dev. We got Hicks, center, normal dev. We got a 73 wide receiver, Cartwright. Great overall player, but no dev trait. Elam, I simmed out after this. Normal dev. We got Bracken. Sometimes, you know, the sim will throw you a bone. If you're not getting dev traits, as we saw with our last draft, by getting that tackle and safety with the devs. But uh, ultimately, no, not the best draft, but not the worst draft. We are here now for year three of the Seattle Seahawks rebuild. Just got breaking news that the commanders traded for Carson. That's hilarious. Carson Wentz is back in the NFC East. Uh, but let's take a look at our Seattle team here as we gear up for year three. Now, this is start where we're going to start to want to challenge for the playoffs. Here's the look of the squad. Offensively, not a lot of changes. Cohen moves into right guard. Other than that, it's the exact same starters from a year ago. Now, better than ever, Bryce Young with the superstar dev. Defensively, kind of about the same. I mean, we do have the hidden dev D tackle here. Maybe we throw him to the Wolves just to... Like, what are the chances he has superstar? Not super high. Also, Puna Ford is really good last year, but we got a gamble on the outside right now of Barclay. Uh, we got the young linebacker, Washington. He'd be a guy. I'd love to just get a random dev trade increase. That'd be pretty dope, huh? We're going to put Dancer out here on the outside uh, with Reed moving back into the slot. But, I mean, this is just a, a sick team between, I think, Sauce, Brian Burns, maybe even Jamal Adams might have a chance getting to the 99 club this season on the defensive side of the ball. Same DK should hit 99 this year. A lot of talent, man. We got seven wins last year. I want to see at least 9-10 this year. Coming out of our bye week here in year three. Not bad, man. Six and three. Seems like the NFC West is slowly going from like a really bad division to a really good division overnight. As three teams are tied for first place right now. Uh, let's take a look at our contracts. Happy with it, though. Happy. We're up to an 88 overall. Very talented roster. And we have a decent amount of salary cap. And there's not a lot of money that we have to spend this year. Drew Locke, see ya. I think Cody Barton with the Superstar, even though the rating might not be there. Ooh. That's a lot of... Again, goes down to, like, is there going to be an upgrade? Might as well have his abilities for what they're worth in the sim. Fatu Kasi can replace him. Taron Armstead, we'd like to keep him for a two-year deal. Got to pretty much ride him into the ground. We got him locked up. Again, no regression. We signed him as a 31-year-old. I think he's gone down one overall point. So it was a great signing, great veteran signing. He's the anchor to our offensive line. All right, sim so in the last week here... This, it was, we won the division, which is great, because it was it got bad there for a minute. Felt like any time we played, I think we went 0-2 against the Rams, 0-2 against the 49ers, and like the fact that it was all three of us kind of neck and neck for the division, it was like we beat everybody except the teams we need to be beating, but then it sets up a year three wild card. We made the playoffs, get to take on the 49ers right away. 88 versus 87 overall team. Let's see how we got here. I didn't see many player of the week, so I, I don't know. Maybe we're just a really well-rounded team with no... Dominant performers. I mean, top five in passing yards for Bryce Young, like he was last year. Touchdowns off the mark, though. What did he have last year, though? 30... 5? 36? 37? 38 touchdowns? 42! Where's the drop-off? So the yards are still good. The touchdown, I mean, did it? was it just vultured? Is there, like, a crazy amount of touchdown? Not even from Chris Carson. I mean, Penny? That's probably her win. I think Penny only had one touchdown last year. So there, you know, eight rushing touchdowns versus eight passing touchdowns, kind of the difference. Uh, but still a good year from Bryce Young. 14 and 8, DK, 1,000 for Lockett, 1,000 for Jamison Williams, 700 for Noah Fant. And on the defensive side of the ball, Jordan Brooks, tackle machine. You got 10 half sacks, Ebiketti, 17 TFL. So really, man, Brian Burks, what's going on, But Get after the quarterback. Six picks, Todd Dantzler. Let's go. That's great signing for us. He might go up dev. He actually probably won't because corner dev trade upgrades are broken. But that was very much money well spent bringing in Cam Dantzler as our lone big signing. I guess you could call it. Sauce with three picks. He continues to be amazing. Sauce Island, whatever you want to call it. It's a great year, man. Again, but you can definitely see, like, no dominant. I mean, top five for Bryce Young is good. A couple thousand yard receivers. But it wasn't like we had S-tier players. No one in the MVP race. Don't think we'll have any award winners. Maybe Dantzler for a corner? Maybe? No. Uh, second place there, but I'll still take that, given the fact that he was not a, you know, that was did not cost us a whole lot of money. So year three, have a chance to go on a little bit of a run here. If 
First game of the playoffs against the 9-8 49ers. We'd like to get our first playoff victory, and we actually th just fucking shit the bed. 41-28, we fall in Bryce Young's first taste of the playoffs. What happened? Was it was it on Bryce Young? Do you have like five picks? Something like that? Not, not yet. Not a clean game there. 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, two interceptions for still an outstanding quarterback. Still got two more years. Sky's the limit. But that is definitely frustrating to uh, kind of shit the bed in your first playoff game. No other way to put it. And your copy-paste Super Bowl, at least as close as that gets him out of 22, the Cowboys and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Dallas wins 35-28. More so, let's just look at our team. Any dev traits to close out year three on offense or defense? On the offensive side of the ball, we got nothing. Defensive side of the ball, we got Burton, Jamal Adams, Ebiketti up to superstar. <laughs> Literally, you know, Burton, I mean, Burton, like, again, just said, he got, like, glitched into getting dev trade increases. I'm not going to punish him for that. Dancer with six picks. Doesn't go up dev trait. Ebiketti does. Jamal Adams just does. I mean, you can only have three on the defense, so it's a surplus requirement. But it would have been nice Dancer to get rewarded for his big interception year. But at least we know he can play like that. Doesn't need the dev trait. Doesn't need abilities and stuff like that in the sim to go off. Let's get into year four. Free agency looks pretty juicy here. We've been looking for a lineman. Trey Smith is there. We came in with the top bid. It paid a lot of money. But I think that's money well spent. Another option was Odafe Owe at pass rusher right outside linebacker. But it's a realistic rebuild. We just drafted Washington in the first round. Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to just immediately get his competition in terms of like, and also spending all of our salary cap. So here's hoping we can land Trey Smith because we miss out on him. We're kind of putting all our eggs in his basket. If not, I mean like, you know, there's guys. There's guys that we could bring in at guard that I'd be content with as an upgrade because right now we get a 68 guard. Leatherwood, I could use Leatherwood. We could use uh, Niang, could also shift into guard there. So hopefully we land Trey Smith and we crush our draft. Underrated trend in this Seahawks rebuild. We have got, I think, every free agent we've extended. A con man, Pete Carroll, man. Pete Carroll is a hell of a talker. Make another year for us. We're probably back in the market for just BPA on defense. We will start here with Daniel Price because he was... Dominant. That's as good of a combine as you will find. Like, if they had the combine scores, that's probably an eight from back in the old days there. Um, could go back to trying to find, like, the pass rusher that we're looking for. Hobbs, not exactly what we're looking for, unfortunately. And you go to the other side. We have Mario Alexander from Miami. F zone covers, don't care. Even more so for a pass rusher. But the combine absolutely sucks. So I think it's probably just in our best interest. Go BPA yet again on defense. And it is the player that we have scouted. Daniel Price, tackle's not amazing, but if you can get off the quarterback, if you have a dev trait, which you do, you're going to be a beast for us. Draft recap time, I mean, you know, we hit the home run in the first round. That's that's what we needed. Now the ratings, hopefully it's high. It could be like low 70s. It tends to be when you get dev trait guys, they're under 75, and he is. Wait, what? This is my draft from last year. Why is it showing my draft from last year? Come on, man. What a joke. Okay, let's try to find our rookies here. Uh, we got a, a Meander, DN, 69. We got, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, there's Price. There's our guy. 74 hidden dev, 76 with a confidence boost right out the gate. He's going to be a good player, man. We have, we have single-handedly in the last two years, I think, got two guys that are going to be very good for us. We got George Farrow, DN, 72 normal. Thought he had a chance to get a dev trade when I picked him, but... You know, you can't, you can't all be home runs, man. And ultimately, solid draft class. Back-to-back -back years, we've got great D tackles. Remember last year, draft pick Barclay in the second round. He's up to a 75 with the star dev. High ceiling for both these guys. And I think they're going to be peaking this year into next year. Year five, those are going to be our two starting D tackles. Seattle year four. Let's see where we're at here, man. Bryce Young, best young, one of the best. I can't say for sure he's the best, but one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, 85. Superstar DK up to a 99. I will say surprise, James Williams' development. A little bit lower than where I thought he would have been at this point. But with a big addition to Trey Smith, we have the double T Smiths here on the right-hand side. I fully expect uh, more you know, more passing yards, more passing touchdowns, more rushing guards. A guy like Trey Smith, game changer on the O-line. Defensively, we're going with the two young guns at D-tackle, Barclay and Price. 
even though Dexter was a former first round pick, just obviously just hasn't done much. Uh, Ebiketti now, getting me interested to see how he plays as a superstar, how Barton plays as an X Factor, how Adams plays as an X Factor. Those are new dev traits for those guys. Excited to see them take their games to the next level as Brian Burns. I really think, you know, maybe not Adams. What is he, 30 now? 29, 30? He might not ever hit 99 club, but I, I think this year for sure, uh, Brian Burns and Sauce Gardner hit that 99 club. And hopefully, they're also going to be Super Bowl champions when all is said and done. So let's get into year four. Dude, we just... I was like, all right, midway point, four and five. We just won a game three nothing. Hot. Jesus. So I don't know. You're four. Uh, my team just doesn't want to do anything. Kind of at the mercy of that. Uh, let's look at our contracts. Players that we want for the final year of this rebuild. Where, I mean, again, maybe this is going to be easy decisions here because... We're going to need some funds to get guys that can put this team over the hump. If they're 3 nothing, uh, We got Tyler Smith, the right tackle. He's been serviceable. I feel like he's worth bringing back for sure. He, I think plus we drafted him. That's always an added bonus to me wanting to keep you. Jameson Williams. I mean, you know, again, he's better than his stat. He's a lock. He got 1,000 yards. He gets 1,000 yards more often than not. I think he's still fine there at wide receiver. I think Lockett's where we look at upgrading. We can go Williams, DK, and then there's probably going to be a big wide receiver, a veteran out there. Uh, Evaketti, he's been our best pass rusher for the last couple of years, even though we paid outrageous money to bring him 90-some almost. 99 overall, Brian Burns. Evaketti's getting all the plays. I don't hate it because we drafted him. We have Dixon at punter. You know, special teamers matter, I suppose, so we'll try to retain his services. I was actually kind of interested to see if we we're going to get bent over by a punter, but we did not. Justin Reed, we got to re-sign re our secondary here. We'll give him a four-year deal. He's been solid. Not great, not spectacular, you know, not five, six, seven picks, but is what it is. Still got Jamal Adams. Can't really let him leave at this point. He wants to make more money. Of course he does. Sauce Gardner. I mean, look, we're still going to be setting ourselves up with, you know, 30 million bucks. So we can get, like, a guy. Probably, you know, we look at wide receiver in that department, but we will re-sign Jamal Adams and still have decent money to see if we can upgrade over Tyler Lockett. Then Jamal Adams hits us with the, I want to go to free agency. Okay, fine. You haven't done shit all anyways. So we've closed out the year 8-9. Better than, you know, the way we started. But I, I can't get over that 3-0 victory, man. With this high-powered offense, that's what kind of what happens. And also follow up from Jamal Adams. Maybe I'll tag him. No, that's still completely an option there. Tag's probably not too much different from what his contract would have been on a yearly hit. We'll, we'll take it. We'll at least keep an open mind to that. Uh, you know, let cooler heads prevail. But look at our team this year. I don't know what happened. Uh, should have took a step forward. It did not at all. That's just shitty numbers across the board. Shitty numbers across the board for a quarterback that had 42 yards. You know, worst yards he's had. Easily the worst. That's like almost half his less touchdowns as he had his first year. What's going on? Carson's vulture in here, I guess. He had a good year. He's happy. DK's happy. No one else really is on the offense. Defensively, Jordan Brooks, solid year. Nine and a half sacks, Ebiketti. Seven and a half, Brian Burns. And on the picks front, I mean, again, it looked like Jamal Adams. Is he going to be worth the money? That's going to be the question. Great player. Don't know, really know what he brings to the sim. Because I'm not really like, look, the last couple years since we've had him. No sacks. He had nine sacks. Six sacks. Nine sacks. We got zero, zero, half a sack out. Interceptions, he's never really been a ball hawk guy. More of, you know, the enforcer style. He is Cam Chancellor replacement, but um, we'll have to make a decision if we want to tag him or not on the fence right now. Because that's a lot of money we can play with to make our team better in other areas. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any award winners. Uh, nope. So, yeah, just unexplainable season. All it can be said, man. Again, now you're starting to see why. My rebuilds are few and far between. It's just, you know... I'm trying my best. As we close out year four, the, of course, Dallas went to the Super Bowl again, and they won. Uh, more so focus on our team. Any dev traits look really, really quick here. I don't think we will unless there's just something really weird. Kind of came out of nowhere. So on offense, no dev traits gained. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, Price is superstar. 
That's cool. Drafted a superstar player on defensive tackle. So that's pretty dope. Bump price up there. We'll bump Barclay up a little bit. So that's a hit. Uh, Justin Reed, I think, went to superstar. So that's cool. A couple upgrades. We'll take that going up into uh, year five. Now we just got to make a decision. Do we tag Jamal Adams or do we let him hit the open market? So we have one more chance to negotiate with him, which is kind of cool that we had that second option. It's what you get with you know the uh, coaching tree. It's about a $12 million cap it was what we are offering him. The franchise tag of 20... Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't think we can pay that. Do not think... No, let him walk. Hasn't done anything for us in this rebuild. There is nothing in free agency. Like, I'm looking for... Like, any good upgrades. We have a center. Okay. Got to run the sign of center here, I guess. Um, you know... Lockett's as good, really, as any of the free agents we could rock. I mean, we got Quez there. The thing is, we need a slot. So we'll throw our money at Wandale Robinson. Give him four and a half. We just have... Like, we might have just re resign Jamal Adams. All things considered right now. Um, like, of course, like, just brutal, brutal free agency class here. Gearing up for a final year. I mean, we didn't need much. Our team's just been... Put through the Madden ringer of like our team should, you know, we don't, there's, there's, there's a reason to a degree why there's not a lot of upgrades is because our team's really, really good. But as it stands, I, I think we just, you know, this is the only make it happen with Jamal Adams. We offered him 61, it was 61, 62 million dollars. So we'll just go 65 because literally I don't, and look, I guarantee it's going to be far and away the best offer. Like again, just makes no sense because like the offer we gave him is way higher than the fair offer. And it's, and it's... I don't know, man. But we have yet to miss out on any free agent we've thrown money at. Wandale Robinson, is that enough to be the upgrade over Tyler Lockett? Or should we not disrespect a Seahawk legend and should have just extended him? But we got both Adams and Wandale Robinson. Our team's almost a 90 overall. Can we not go below 500 in the fifth and final year, please? Before the draft, we're at pick 14... And we're just looking BPA right now. And I think that might just be trying to find another playmaker at corner. And this guy looks good. This this is our guy, I think. Dom Johnson. Not We've got B-catching, B-man coverage. And then 6-2, so he can play on the outside. can play inside. Great combine. I think he's pretty good fit. Pretty good chance to be hidden. Uh, he's not in death, but should be a good player. Draft recap. Who knows if this is actually going to show our draft this year or like a draft from year one. But I uh, would like to see the rating of our corner. Oh, it does. Hey, 75. Even though he's normal dev, which kind of stays. It's, it's the final year, right? We're not going to really find contributors. More so kind of piecing in some depth pieces. He's not a bad player. 75. I think that might be the highest overall player we've drafted this whole time. Uh, rest of the draft, got a tight end and a running back that are solid ratings. But for the most part, I mean, I, I'll be honest. Haven't drafted the best in this rebuild once we've got into the Madden generated classes. Like, uh, you know. The, the, the depth hasn't been there. We got the one superstar D tackle last year, but other than that, it's kind of been hit or miss. I don't know if that's the again. We still just have an 88 overall team. There's there's no weakness to this team. We have to we have to make the playoffs. Year five, final year. This is as good as I think you're gonna get it in five years. If you can do better, for sure, you know, tag me in it on Twitter or something like that. But then a five year period with everything from the fallout of the Russell Wilson trade. I don't know if you can do much better in rebuilding the Seattle Seahawks within a five-year period of time. Uh, you know, we brought in Taron Armstead. We developed Lewis. We drafted Cohen. We brought in Trey Smith. We drafted Tyler Smith. We developed Noah Fant. We brought in Jameson Williams via the draft. Signed Wondell Robinson here. Maybe that will give us something with the slot that we weren't getting with Lockett, even though Lockett wasn't really a problem. It was We gambled that there might be a big upgrade there. Uh, DK's 98. Carson's been solid. Uh, and then we got, of course, under center, QB1, Bryce Young, up to an 89 superstar, only 24, so definitely one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, currently ranked as a top 10 quarterback. Uh, guarantee he's probably younger than most of the other quarterbacks that are ahead of him, too. So he's been very good, even though, like, statistically, he has sizzled off. 40 touchdowns as a rookie, 25 touchdowns last year in year four. So you don't know what you're going to get, which kind of sucks. Defensively. We'll bump Barkley up there. Price and Barkley. We got Brian Burns, 99. Eva Ketty's up to an 87. That was a tremendous pick for us in hindsight. Uh, Sauce Gardner, 99. Reed. I mean, just... 
I, there's, there's just not much else you could like. Is our specialist all messed up? Like, is this where we're not getting what we want to see? Like, we'll put our star dev safety at slot. Burns, Price, Abiketti. We'll put Brooks there at sub linebacker. Chris Carson, both of these spots. Wondell Robinson in the slot. Like, you know, this should be a 12 win team. And the fact that I can't say with any sense of confidence that this team's either going to be a 12 win team or a 6 win team, I'm pretty nervous. We're just going to, we're going straight here. No cuts, no, there's, you know, sometimes, you know, I may be tempted, especially when a rebuild's not going away, just force some wins. Let's, let's, I'm over it. If we're not making the playoffs, you know, we're doing, it's authentic. Authentic and raw here. I'm going to comment this whole sim so that this team that should be 11, 12 wins, if it's not, you could all go through the ups and downs of me. I, I don't know. You know. We've been slowing down a little bit on the rebuilds on the channel. I still have a plan to do all the teams. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 teams left that we've yet to do. I mean, there's still some big ones in there. Atlanta. Really, the follow of the Rams could be an interesting one. The Steelers are an interesting rebuild. Obviously, Eagles. Another team interesting for a rebuild, even though we're two in the series. It's just, man, I don't know. I never want to, even though it just ends up that way, you know, I never want to make content where I'm bummed out trying to get you guys to watch something that I'm bummed out about. And I, I felt like the best way to do rebuilds right now, because they're usually so just demoralizing, is at least if I space them out like one a week tops, it's not as bad. Hey, we got 10 to 7. That's not bad. I can just say right now that all I'm thinking about, this is this is what I want to do because of obviously the trade and stuff like that. I think Seattle projecting to Madden 23 it's going to be one of the top teams to want to use in, as your base franchise or just rebuild and stuff like that so I want to do it here but I can just tell you right now all I'm thinking about is my NCAA series like literally last night at like 1am I, I have a page of notes of how I want to present this NCAA series and uh, I, I think it's going to be really dope when it does drop but hey there we go we end up year 5 we finish as a 92 overall team 10 wins first place in the NFC West our second NFC West title of the rebuild looking at the stats here I have no idea, like, yeah, I don't know, what what Bryce Young would have done. Hey, better. You know, top 10 and really averaged out for both of them. 4,600 yards, 32 touchdowns, 9 picks. Uh, solid year from Carson, 1,200 yards, four t 14 tutties. Wondell Robinson, yeah, that was a fit. Coming off free agency, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, 1,007 for DK. Almost 9-3 and three for Noah Fant. Solid year from Jameson Williams, too. Defensively, Jamal Adams, 102 tackles, 2 picks. 15 and a half sacks, Brian Burns, 12 and a half price, 12 from Ebnaketti, so that's outstanding. Found a pass rush. Four picks there from Barton leading the team. Superstar X Factor outside linebacker. Quick look at the yearly awards here. We got McCaffrey is your MVP. Bryce Young coming in at number nine. In the NFC, just see if we have outright award winners. Not looking too good. It's not, it's fine, whatever. Going on a playoff run. I'm not playing the full games, but I will I will play the moments and try to help this Seattle team with Bryce Young at quarterback go on a little bit of Super Bowl run. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's see if our 92 overall team, that's kind of been like a 92 overall team for a couple years, can get their first playoff victory. Opening drive. It's in the wet weather. We get no points. Looks like that was a red zone drive, too. We end up with zero on the board. Arizona gets the first score of the game. We'll come in on this third down, see if we can spark some life into the squad. Third and seven. We're just playing on all pro because we're not here to measure wieners or anything like that. You know, if you want all Madden, watch the Eagles series. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Tiptoeing in my Jordans. Let's go, Bryce Young. First down on the ground. Drive continues. Let's see if we can punch this one in here, fellas. Oh, another third down. Need me to hold their hand here. Try to get them in the end zone. Third and five. We got DK Metcalf, Jameson Williams, no fans. All viable options. Don't really like any of them. And we're just going to do it ourselves here again. Might have been able to go to no fans there at the end. But again, we're just going to... Move the change, and let's see if our team that we've built can actually get us a touchdown. And of course not. What do we got here? Third and eight. All right. Go to Carson out the backfield. Extends. Can the Sim in three plays get four yards? I have my doubts, but let's be positive here. They do. Thank you. 
First touchdown of the game. Arizona got the field, kicks a field goal. We got a two-minute drive. Just, you know, we're I don't even think we've been in their territory. What is going on in this game? Third down alert. We got to come in just, just to help them out. Uh... I don't think we've outside of that touchdown drive we've been in their territory this whole game. 92 overall team. Need to need to state that here. Uh, do we try DK on the outside? Walsh, why is it so dark? DK jumps up and he comes down with the football. He dropped it. Okay. Thought that was a pretty clean look. Four turnovers for the Cardinals here today. At least our defense is answering the call. I mean, Kyler Murray's not an easy assignment. But again, uh, it's pitch blackout right now. Like, it's so... Why is it so dark? I can barely see my jerseys. I know my eyes are gone, starting to go to shit here a little bit, but my God, this is bad. Carson out the backfield, move the chains. It's a, just a bad game. We're playing in the apocalypse here, apparently. Third down. Can we get a third down conversion? No. We can't even make the field goal. I don't even want to, like, try... Fourth down, all right. Let's... We'll help him out here. Fourth and two. Like, what is this, man? Go to Jameson Williams. I mean, field goal can win it. I want to go to the red zone. On the two. Make the field goal 50 some seconds. Oh my god. We won 10 9. <laughs> That's right up there with the 3 0 victory he had two years ago. Uh, first playoff victory, and it's utterly embarrassing. Like, I, I mean, you know, it was raining. Like, maybe it's one of those games where there's like 20 wind. But, um, really pay, played down to the level of our competition this matchup. Oh my god, dude. What the fuck? Uh, we won. That's all that matters. Next up, in the individual round, we have the 9-8 and eight Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just out of curiosity, who's their quarterback? Now, I've seen Gardner Minshew up there, top passing yards. I'm going to guess that's my pick. Minshew's their quarterback. Just because he's been top three, top five in passing stats for the last couple years. And there you go, Gardner Minshew. Alrighty. Big time playoff matchup. We're hosting Gardner Minshew and the Bucks. Gardner Minshew versus Bryce Young. Who is going to be able to elevate their team and take them to the championship game? Well, we got two field goals for Seattle. That means we have one touchdown in our two playoff games, so that's fine. We're playing great defense. Needs to be said. Also, I haven't really given up touchdowns. Come on, get a tutty. Get a tutty. Yes, sir. Man, our defense has actually been lights out. Needs to be said. There's our first touchdown given up, and it's late... Second half. Dominant performance here. Thank you. Team's playing like they're supposed to be playing here this game. 37 to 21. The Seattle Seahawks here in year five have punched their ticket to the NFC Championship game. I mean, not a crazy game from Bryce Young, but efficient for sure. Almost 100 yards on the ground for Chris Carson. Let's go, man. Oh, no. Oh, uh, no. Well, here's hoping for the best. Dallas Cowboys are standing between us and the Super Bowl. And you know what? Truth be said, truth be told, you know we we took down the Bucks. Bucks are not an easy, easy assignment either. We cooked the shit out of them. So, you know maybe we could do the deal against Dallas. But they are the Chiefs of the NFC in this game. They're too good. We all know why. But uh, here's hoping, man. Red Zone. I'll come in if we get stalled out there. We don't. We're we're getting tutties here. I actually wouldn't mind hopping in here soon to see if we can get a go-ahead. Third down. Yes, sir. Perfect time. Third and one on the three. It is time to dial up something for our boy Chris Carson here. Great power back. We'll go We'll go stretch. Uh, looks like we're going to be running away from Micah Parsons. Let's go, baby. Untouched. Chris Carson gets in. And there is the first lead of the game for the Seattle Seahawks. Let's play some great defense like we've done. All right, they get a pretty much instant touchdown there. We'll come in. Third and seven. We played great defense throughout this playoff run. Dallas is a different beast in Madden. Get it a quick. Oh, we broke an ankle. Jamison Williams. 
absolutely snatches Trevon Diggs' ankles there. Gets the gets the first. That's Alabama on Alabama crime. Go to the red zone. Get the touchdown. Defense, come on. One stop. That's all we need. No, feels like every time Dallas gets the ball here, it's been it's been seven when we were hoping for three. Third and ten. We are in field goal range, so I just don't throw a pick here. Give us a chance to tie it up. But, you know, we want to be aggressive. Oh, no! I should have just... I should have took Jameson Williams on that safety. Should have done it. And we missed the field goal. Need some magic. 41 seconds. DK Metcalf, are you ready to be a legend? Oh, they're pressing him. They're pressing DK Metcalf without Trevon Diggs. Okay, we're going to have Carson pass pro. This is our chance. He doesn't even... He does... My quarterback... Does, I hit Y and he just ate the sack. He's like, all right, fuck it. Eating the sack. Let's go, DK. Try it again. Unbelievable. Had him beat and just like, ah, I'm just not going to, you know, for some reason I'm going to go to the sideline and not just keep going straight downfield. I at least have another chance. And was that, did that look like Micah Parsons dropping back in coverage? All right, let's try this one more time. Like, I, I swear I saw 11 covering my 13 down the field. Like, what is that, man, for arm? Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hit. Hail Mary situation here. Look at this. Feet set. Feet set. Feet set. 94 throw power. Right? Feet set. Oh my god! There's no one there! Dump it on the 35. Dump it, just jump right on the 35. Dude, that's so. Boom. Just. Look, arm doesn't even get hit till, uh, till after the throw's completed. It wasn't like he got hit as he was throwing. And he. <laughs> Thanks for watching another rebuild, fellas. Rebuilding the Seattle Seahawks, fallout of the Russell Wilson trade. Uh, here in Madden 22 franchise mode. I hope you guys got something out of it. I mean, I think we had a very interesting approach to how Seattle can turn it all around. And it's just Madden sucks. So, uh, but thank you very much for supporting the channel. Content, as always, very much appreciated. It's super, super excited for the NCAA series. No ETA on that, though. I'm not rushing it. Um... But I'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.